Hey guys, welcome to the another topic of discussion today that is last which is nothing but local anesthetic systemic toxicity. Guys, thank you once again for your support for the last videos. Keep uh, motivating motivate me guys and if you are new to my channel, please subscribe my channel. Let's continue with the topic of discussion today that is last. Okay. So last before I am going to the proper topic last, I just want to discuss some of the basics of the local anesthetics to get a better view of idea about last. Okay. So local anesthetics which are in the practice you are using day to day in regional blocks everything we are using is local anesthetics usually having a hydrophobic aromatic ring okay which is surrounded by your hydrophilic amide group and these are attached to the intermediates to help in attaching these two rings is known as your esters or amide depending upon this it is classified into ester linked uh, local anesthetics or amide linked local anesthetics what is the main difference between the ester or amide linked local anesthetics metabolism is mainly different it is metabolized by the pseudocholinesterase enzyme in the plasma and amide linkage is metabolized by the hepatic oxidation so the toxicity will differ in these two individuals depending upon which is actually i'm just focusing more on the local anesthetic toxicity part okay so it's metabolism is local anesthetic is metabolism in the hepatic oxidation part so you know now by the local anesthetics you have again what now what is the mechanism of like action of local anesthetics you know that uh, mechanism of action is what you know you have are having lipid bilayer just consider this is lipid bilayer this is inner membrane this outer membrane well, normally what happen is local anesthetics will cross the cell membrane and inner side of the cell membrane there may be voltage gated sodium channel uh, channels is there okay it, the local anesthetics which is coming inside will blocks the voltage gated sodium and it will block the voltage gated sodium uh, channels so that no sodium entry no sodium entry into the cell so no depolarization when there is no depolarization what has happened there is no action potential generation so no action potential is generated so nerve is not conducted so you will not be able to perceive any pain conduction from peripheral nose to cortex is not happening so no perception of pain is the mechanism action of local anesthetics okay so these uh, now we have we have to know what are the causes for the last and who are the risk factors what are the risk factors and who which are the age group will move on to last causes you know there is two main causes either inadvertently you have uh, given intravenously inadvent intravenous large dose you have given okay large dose of local anesthetics you have given or our intra-arterial uh, inadvertently have injected intra-arterial whenever giving peripheral nerve blocks or the systemic absorption of the particular local anesthetics is more because you are using the systemic absorption site you know uh, in local peripheral nerve blocks your roots of administration peripheral nerve blocks intercostal blocks having the more absorption because it is closed and vascular surges are more for so intercostal vessels the risk of last is more compared to your intercostal block sorry vessel like block more next followed by your epidural and spinal this is the order of uh, absorption is more and toxicity is more epidural and spinal which is more than your interfacial plane blocks interfacial plane blocks of the abdominal tap block and other thing facial plane blocks followed by which is more than your another uh, psoas compartment block it's more than sciatic nerve block so in the least is actually seen with your brachial plexus block upper limb blocks least with that okay these are the some of the causes on which will the patient uh, can develop last okay and then coming to the risk factors you have to know the risk factors which are the risk factors for last so risk factors for last you know age less than four months age less than four months and more than 70 years why less than four months you know less than four months liver is immature so production of alpha 1 acid glycoprotein is low 
so before that you have to understand some of the features like um, what are the physiochemical properties of the local anesthetics i just little bit just mention and then i will be coming again to the risk factors physiochemical properties of local anesthetics when you take local anesthetics you know it is lipophilic so it will easily cross the cell membrane number one number two pka of the local anesthetics also important pka is nothing but the where the uh, pk is nothing but at the which ph the ionized and unionized forms are in proportion okay higher the if the pk is actually low means uh, if the pk is high means the number of ionized particle is more if pk is low means the number of unionized particle is more unionized particle is nothing but your free form of the local anesthetics which is helpful for the action so that when the pk is low your ionization is less so unionized form is more so action is efficient and the toxicity is more when the with the pk is uh, low than the ph then the unionized form toxicity is more you know uh, most of the local anesthetic have protein binding capacity and protein binding mostly with alpha 1 acid like a protein when it binds to alpha 1 acid like a protein the availability for toxicity of local anesthetic in free form in plasma is less so toxicity is less right in patients with less than four months there is alpha and acid protein is decreased because the liver fire functions are immature so the, the free form unnaturalized form the plasma is more so toxicity is more whereas more than seven years you know hepatic and uh, renal uh, functions have been reduced so that the metabolism of local anesthetics is reduced so the increased incidence of toxicity in that age group more than seven years so age less than more months and more than seven years Coming to the next, uh, next second is actually where you know the patient uh, having toxicity in pregnant patients have increased more prone to develop toxicity. Why pregnant patient? You know hormones uh, produced during the pregnancy have increased sensitivity of the local anesthetics, and you know, because of that only we are using the low dose of local anesthetics because of all the reason. You know, pregnancy itself a hyperdynamic circulation. So hyperdynamic circulation. So absorption rate will be faster in the pregnant patient. Why absorption rate is faster? Uh, you know, the epidural because of the venous congestions. The rate of absorption is more faster in the pregnant patient, and pregnant patient also have low serum your alpha 1 acid glycoprotein and even another albumin so they have more prone um, even with low doses the absorption of the rate in the pregnant patient is more and it increased uh, predisposed to the toxicity another your organ dysfunctions like hepatic and uh, uh, renal dysfunctions renal dysfunction if metabolic acidosis sensory it is not seen in the initial stages only at the later end stage the toxicity is more hepatic dysfunction the same reason the metabolism is reduced and the well, serum uh, alpha and acid glycoprotein levels are reduced so that increase risk of toxicity okay and another is you know cornithin deficiency because that is also for the transport of this it is helping so cornithin deficiency or patient having uh, pseudocolonesterase deficiency these are another reason pseudocolonesterase deficiency because why the ester chlorpropane if you used in local anesthetic even pregnant patient the increased incidence of last have been reported because they also have a low pseudocolonesterase activity in pregnancy also so more uh, increased toxicity of chlorpropane chlorpropane has been reported okay these are some of the procedural uh, risk related as i mentioned the block before itself intercostal plane block is more compared to your uh, epidural caudal which is more uh, compared to your um, interfacial plane blocks and less with brachial plexus block these are the duration next coming to the drugs which is causing last drugs which cause last you know last predominantly last is actually majorly um, contributed by your you are fascinating because you will be thinking of BPO and BPO and all the thing but if a BPO can contributing to the last is actually only 20% whereas the toxicity contributed by your lignocaine 
and rupee vacant is 33 percent each okay so the incidence is more with lignocaine rupee vacant toxicity but cardiotoxicity is more with bp vacant even though this last is 20 percent cardiotoxicity is more with bp vacant followed by your liver bp vacant and uh, rupee vacant and lignocaine which is in the least cardiotoxic okay another liver bp vacant uh, is actually one percent uh, mepi vacant is four percent mepi vacant is four percent remaining others are actually four percent so the majority is by lignocaine and rupee vacant drugs which cause the last and last majority it involves two, two systems majorly that is cns and cvs you know the distribution is also it's like the only cns part is actually 45 percent only cvs part is only 11 percent cns plus cvs involvement is 44 percent in last okay so now next we will be seeing the individual manifestation in uh, cns what are the clinical manifestation and cvs what are the clinical manifestations okay so when uh, last in cns involvement in cns is actually you know the patient will be having majority will be prodromal symptoms prodromal symptoms what are the prodromal symptoms the patient will be having metallic taste metallic taste okay and this patients will be anxious and uh, even in some patients hallucinations have been reported in prodromal majority will be having the metallic taste and nausea or something that everything will be seen in 44 percent of the individuals okay and remaining seizures in uh, 25 percent of the people there will be observance of seizures and another 20 percent you can able to observe somnolescence coma or respiratory depression this another 25 percent of the individuals okay this is usually seen in the late stages majority is actually your prodromal symptoms will be the metallic taste anxiousness and your perioral tingling numbness that is also will be seen perioral tingling and numbness okay so when you ask 44 percent the patient having the same findings remaining are less common findings okay and even cvs you know what are the cvs findings majority of the patients having what bradycardia hypotension and brady and hypo which is seen in how many percent this is seen in 45 percent of the people the remaining your tachycardia hypertension is seen in only 15 percent other arrhythmias is most commonly seen vtvf which is 15 percent your asystole is seen in 7% because these are the most common favorite examiner's question. Here they will be asking which arrhythmias, how many percent is happening, that everything they will ask. Another is your um, bundle branch block, bundle branch block, okay, and the least common your ventricular ectopics, that is 2%, okay. So guys, actually this is a big video. I'm just uh, stopping here. And in my second part, I will be seeing, uh, I'll be describing my prevention and management of last. Okay. These are up to clinical features I have covered in this video. Okay guys. Thank you guys.